Okay, cool. Um, so is there anything that needs to be said before I just uh, get this? All right, I'm going to take that as a no. Okay, so um, we're going to do a debate today. It's um, between J.F. Garricky and um, Fish Mackey, also known as Joe Sunseed. So we've talked to both debaters beforehand. They've agreed on the proposition, is race bio or race is biologically real. Uh, so JF's gonna take the pro, Fish is gonna take the con. And um, my whole view is that a good debate is one where the moderator doesn't have to talk at all. No one's here to listen to a moderator. So if you guys are not talking over each other and I don't really have to say anything, that would be an ideal debate. Um, I think we'll just flip a coin and the winner can decide who goes first. And obviously, um, whoever goes first will not be the person who gets the last word. So um, why don't you, uh, you, here, you call it fish. You want heads or tails? Uh, heads. Okay. We actually do have heads. So do you want to go first and not get the last word? Or do you want to go second and get the last word? Um, I'll go second. Okay, well, then I will pass the floor to uh, JF. Here we go. All right, well, uh, if the question is, is race biologically real? What do we mean when we ask if something is real? Well, we, we're asking if there is a corresponding reality that this thing points to and that is observable. I guess that will be my, tre my threshold for something to be biologically real. Now, uh, the concept of race is biologically real simply because when we look at the genes of people, we don't find that genes are equally spread across all humans in some random fashion. Instead, what we find is that the genes of people are gathered in cluster according to where their ancestors came from. This is why Rosenstein uh, ended up with his results that yes humanity is clustered in the sense that there are certain genes that you find and you find them more likely into the the descendants of people who were from africa there are genes that you find more likely into the descendants of europeans and asians too therefore the question is biologically is race biologically real the answer is yes it is because we have found that the genes of people are not equally spread across the populations now there are versions of race that are false but they are often used by the opponents of race science people who want to blur the image and they will come to you and they will say, no, race doesn't exist because you don't have a gene for being black. Well, those are straw man version of the definition of race. No one has ever said that there was a gene for being black. It is not a, con it is not a proposition within race science. It is only a proposition that leftists will use to discredit the idea of race. So I would, I would do a metaphor here and, and ask whether let, let's say that our question would be, is a coin loaded? And we would flip that coin. What would be your threshold to determine that the coin is loaded? Would it be that every time it falls on head? Or would it be that more than 50% of the time it falls on head? The second proposition is the correct one. Anyone would consider a coin that, that falls 60% of the time on head a loaded coin and it would be sufficient to answer and there would be no leftists coming here to propose no 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 the coin is not loaded because it doesn't fall 100 percent of the time on head well no there are there are realities in the universe that are statistical that are probabilistic and race is one of them um, they are probabilistic if you look at single genes because yes you will find some genes that you would have assigned to the african population some of them have slipped into the european population in a very small percentage but when you start looking at masses of genes like 100 genes 1000 genes or more it becomes very clear the picture of human genetics is a non-randomly distributed one and that will be it for
yeah, I'm not going to pop in between. It's just free form. So just go ahead, Joe. I'll only pop in if I have to moderate. All right, cool. Um, well, I, I denied a proposition. And instead, I think that racial categories are socially historically constructed and that this view of race is compatible with multiple metaphys position, metaphysical positions you may hold. Now, I think that uh, there are a couple reasons why I hold to this. One of them is uh, based on a critique of the view that race is biologically real. Namely, I think that people who think that race is biologically real either suffer from a resolution problem. They're unable to give a principled criteria for picking which traits are used to identify one race over another. And so that fails to be a realist position. Or I think that uh, people who say that they hold to a biological race concept um, end up relying on racial categories that are dependent on the aims of researchers or scientific uh, investigations, or just appeals to pragmatic, uh, pragmatic formulations of race. And this really is just a form of constructionism, which is the denial of uh, biological race, and if anything, affirms the position that I hold. And uh, finally, the view I'm promoting is consistent with uh, the scientific consensus that humans are a polytypic species. That is, they exhibit a gradient of phenotypic variation and extensive gene flow throughout evolutionary history has led uh, scientists, uh, geneticists, uh, physical anthropologists to conclude that humans are just a single species with a lot of variation in them. So um, I guess I can also elaborate on the idea of uh, I guess more on the idea of what science says about it. It it seems to me that uh, the Why resolution problem is what arises with JF. That is, uh, he identified uh, various numbers of genes that you would use to cluster people. And he also pointed to the Rosenberg uh, uh, paper that uh, clustered humans into different uh, continental populations. Uh, based on um, on their SMPs. And the uh, issue here is that that paper itself uh, found that there were multiple different uh, human populations. Uh, it had a K of five, K of seven, and uh, so forth. And if anything, uh, what's not happening here is there's no principal distinction being offered that allows us to it allows us to uh, individuate between different uh, racial categories. And so you can certainly look at the human variation and given your research aims, you can uh, cluster humans, but there hasn't been any uh, principled uh, criteria offered in order to identify these different uh, racial groups such that you could say they're biologically real. And so that's, the main reason why I think that race isn't a biological concept. So here we don't have a true rebuttal of anything I've said. In, uh, it may sound bizarre to someone listening to this, but everything that was just said is compatible with my state. Let me review uh, one by one the points that were made here. Uh, the first point is rather uh, than being a biological concept, race is a historical or political construction. Um, have you ever considered, Joe, and let's start with this, I will ask you the question. Have you ever considered the possibility that a historical and political construction was not dichotomously exclusive from a biological conception. In other words, have you ever considered the possibility that saying that race has been historically and politically used or constructed was not at all in contradiction with the fact that it's a biological reality? Um, well, if you're saying it's compatible, I assume you're, you're merely pointing to the fact that you think that there are uh, traits, biological traits that correlate with whatever uh, scheme of racial categories you've, uh, you've accepted. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm asking you, is it contradictory to have something be a 
by uh, a historical and political construction and also refer to a biological reality. Uh, well, I, like I said, you could certainly have biological traits correlate with uh, the categories that you've identified that you've constructed. But I think that if you've constructed these racial cal categories, then they're not biologically real in the way that most people use that term. Okay, so for example, the category brown eyes, was it constructed by you? I'm sorry? The category brown eyes and brown hairs, are these categories human construct? Uh, no, we can identify uh, the genes that correlate with those different uh, Phenotypic no, 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 no. I've not talked about genes. L uh, let's not talk about genes. The idea of a brown eye, of brown eye and brown hairs, are these categories human construct? Well, like I said, they're phenotypic expressions. Are you saying that we observe them? I agree. Are you saying that they're physical traits, that they're biological? I agree. But having those traits correlate with the different types of uh, racial categories that you want to defend, does that I'm not mean talking that about racial categories. Between... Here I'm merely trying to pin you down on whether or not something can be a human construct and also happen to be precisely a representation of also a biological phenomena that is absurd. And you don't seem to want to give me a clear answer, yes or no. Can something be a human construct any biological reality at the same time without any contradiction okay so I've, I've actually answered this a couple times if no you I, haven't said uh, yes or no uh well the thing is that it's yes if you think that the biological traits merely correlate with these uh historically socially constructed categories but that's right. a problem for you because it's mere correlation no no that is not a problem because that is precisely my statement the biological conception of race correlates with the conceptions that people have of black, white, and Asians that we had acquired through personal observation and political construction for thousands of years before we even knew that genes existed. Okay, so the, the problem with just this uh, correlation between these uh, categories of race that we've constructed and biological traits is that it would make it so you're committed to saying all manner of socially, uh, hi social historical uh, constructed categories are actually biological. For example, uh, being uh, a wife or being a widow correlates with having two X chromosomes. So you would have to say that that category that we've constructed uh, is actually biological in the same sense that you want to say that race is biological because you have this socially constructed category being a wife or widow that correlates with uh two x chromosomes but you clearly don't want to say that those are biological categories oh absolutely a widow is biological have you ever seen a, a bird lose a, a sexual partner and reconstruct the nest alone while trying to survive there's nothing more biological than life and death and so, yes, with those are a biological concept. They refer to human beings losing their mate for reproduction. So you're saying that the category that we've constructed in a matrilineal uh, system is actually biological? Oh, absolutely. Everything that humans do is biological. We are animals. We're just a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of chimpanzees that have branched off, off of the other chimpanzees and we became a little... Different. So uh, how do you how do you grapple with the with the folk concepts of race that don't consider uh, widows a biological race concept? I'm not. Uh, whoa, 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 you're you're mixing things there. I didn't say that widows were a biological race concept. I said that widows are a biological concept, just like anything you say about a human is biological in nature, since humans are an animal. So when you observe humans, see it like you would observe birds in nature. That's exactly the same. It's just a different animal with different properties. There is no more biological into the bird than there is into the human. Okay, but 
the issue is is that I'm asking you for biological race, and I gave the matri like um, matrilineal uh, constructed concepts and categories that we use as an example. The other example, though, would be that uh, you would have football players who are more likely to have different uh, biological traits as well. They're more likely to have carpal tunnel syndrome or something. But the issue is, is that uh, you want to just say that that's uh, them being biological. I don't see how that's not just saying that we're all one species, given the fact that we have these biological traits. Why does it point to um, biological race concept? You haven't demonstrated that. Uh, well, I, I think you're mixing things here. Uh, the, the carpal tunnel syndrome is a case where there are correlates between biological measures. I don't know why you're playing on the semantics of whether something in, is biological. You will not win on this one because I, I consider that everything that humans do is biological. So what is your point about what I've not proven? I, I told you, and I, I quoted Ro Rosenstein, I'm sorry, earlier, because I had Eric Weinstein in my head. It is, in fact, Rosenberg, as you pointed out. So I quoted Rosenstein. Berg, uh, who has done the study, he has shown that there are genetic differences. And so there are your biological races. There they are. Uh, we differ from each other by thousands of SNPs in ways that can allow a company like 23andMe to tell you, yes, your ancestors were coming from Africa or no, your ancestors were not. I mean, I've had my 23andMe response they, they revealed to me that I had uh, not observable ancestors in all of my tree of genetic descent that came from Africa within the last 40,000 years. So I can affirm that my ancestors were really the, the European people for more than tens of thousands of years. And I can assess that I am part of this genetic cluster of humanity. Okay, so I have uh, three things to say in response. One of them is the reason why I'm harping on this biological concept is the proposition is whether or not uh, race is biologically real. I don't think it is, and I don't think you've demonstrated it. You've merely shown correlation. Uh, the second thing is that you're confusing ancestry with, uh, with the constructed concept of race, which you apparently affirm. Not all uh, constructed views of race uh, rely on mere ancestry, so interchanging the two, the two would be incorrect. Finally, Rosenberg et al. have said that, uh, quote, uh, evidence for clustering should not be taken as evidence of our support for a particular, particular concept of biological race. And uh, they've also said that arguments about the existence or non-existence of biological races is um, in the absence of a specific context are largely orthogonal to the question of scientific utility. So uh, even the people that you're citing disagree with uh, your um, using their work in order to establish that there's a biological race concept. Absolutely not. There is a key word in what you just read. Rosenberg said any particular definition of race. And therefore, Rosenberg, what he was pointing to is that here we have so much information that there would be many criteria on which we could separate races. And that's why he used particular. He didn't say, you cannot use my study to justify the existence of race. He said, this study is not imposing any particular definition of race. And by that, what he meant is there is so much data in there that you could divide humanity in various groups. You could divide it in five, you could divide it in seven, you could divide it in 600 if you want. That's what the sense of Rosenberg's sentence is. That being said, it's not because an author refuses to do a conclusion, even if it was the case that your interpretation is correct. It's not because an author in science refuses to do a conclusion that this conclusion is not warranted. It's a matter of the data and the facts. Now you come back on the correlation aspect and you seem to believe that because something of a, is a correlation, it's not real, which is amazing because everything in science is a correlation. Any form of empirical science implies observation between some things and some other things. And ultimately everything is a correlation. Uh, I mean, blue, uh, blue eyes and brown eyes, we know of their biological natures through correlation. We correlate with what? With, 
well, most studies will just ask, do you have brown eyes or do you have blue eyes? And so we correlate the request, the, the, the responses of people on a survey with, uh, with genetic realities. Of course, it's a correlation. We haven't measured, uh, exactly the, the waves of light that were emitted by the eye. We haven't photographed the eye and measured exactly how brown it was. But sometimes we can trust uh, the survey responses of people and then we can see, all right, to what extent is that related to biological measures that we have, in this case, genes? Uh, that's what we do uh, with Rosenberg, for example. And essentially, uh, he proves that 99% and any study done on this is always above 90%. But uh, there, there was a particular study that reaches 99% of precision between what the genes tell you about your race and what people would tell you just on a survey. They say, I'm black. And the genes also confirm that they're black. Uh, or they say, I'm European white. And the genes confirm that they're Euro European white. Anywhere between 90 and 99% is what we obtain in terms of precision between self-reported race and the genetic reality. So I'm satisfied that this is not a random occurrence. I'm satisfied that we have proven that the coin is loaded, which is all that I'm saying about race. It's that it's better to consider the existence of race than not knowing anything. The moment you tell me you are in America right now and you are black, I know a lot of things about your genes already, probabilistically, of course, but I know stuff. Sometimes knowledge is probabilistic and it, it's a fallacy to believe that because the knowledge is probabilistic, that it's not knowledge. Okay, so I, I feel like you're, you're misconstruing what I'm saying. I think that you can make sense of race, I think that it's, but I think that it's so, so socially constructed. And I think that you're, you're confusing the order of events here. We have, uh, we have this biology and then we... Uh, use that biology in order to categorize each other. And so it makes sense that there's going to be correlations between these physical traits, between our phenotypic traits, and these categories that we've made. So it makes sense why people who in the United States uh, who identify as being Black American will have those traits, uh, those phenotypic traits we commonly associate with being Black American. Uh, I think that what you're doing is uh, you're confusing the you're uh, reversing the causal chain here. You're saying, oh, well, it's a pre-existing um, genetics is what makes it so we can make these groups when it's actually the opposite. We have pre-existing genetics and we construct these groups based on that pre-existing genetics. So I'm saying that, sure, there are correlations. And I'm also saying that you can make sense of race and have these different concepts of race. I'm not saying we have no knowledge of it. What I'm saying instead is that biological risk concepts don't work. They don't match uh, what the evidence say. And at best, they'll establish correlations that make it so you can have one or a hundred different, um, different races. Finally, when you say that it matches up 90% to uh, what people self-identify, all you're saying is that um, all you're saying is that we can uh, make clusters of uh, different genes and have it uh, have it uh, track the folk concept of race. But if you want to say that those races are biologically real, then you're actually just going to be begging the question right there. Well, but my criteria for biologically real is there is within the science of biology and within the data that we acquire from people, there is ground to find a corresponding reality. That is my threshold for uh, for science. And you've just admitted that essentially we were meeting that threshold. You said we can make sense of the phenotypical characteristics of people and understand race. Well, that, there you go. Uh, I'm satisfied that you believe in race just as much as I do. Now you are suggesting that the full conception of race is uh, somehow inaccurate and that you would have an alternate proposition implied in what you say is that science proposes an alternate proposition on the way we should divide humans. Well, I welcome this alternate proposition because I've never stood for a particular 
uh, proposition of what the race divisions should be. I I'm totally comfortable with the usual black, Asian, whites, but I'm also comfortable with further divisions. And so I welcome any alternative uh, suggestion you may have on how we should define humans. If you want to pull up new words for each race, go ahead. I'm, I'm hearing you here. What is the best way to divide humanity? Okay, so I guess you, you're you actually conceding the point that race isn't biologically real. You think I'm, that it's constructed by us. And so I, I, guess, I guess I'll take victory there. And now what we're doing is we're moving <laughs> this forward. Is, this is dealing, always what you do every time I talk to you. Dealing with, hold you on, I wasn't done, I wasn't done talking. For yourself. You I wasn't are done talking. So if you don't mind, let me finish. It seems like you're ultimately going to be working with this pragmatic view of race. And what I said at the beginning is that uh, that's really just collapsing into social constructionism. If that's true, then it's not race is a biologically real con uh and like a categorization scheme. And so that's fine if you want to concede the point and maybe you want to talk about other things, but I mean... No, I don't want to concede it, so let me intervene here. I don't, because you have not proven that something being a social construct is dichotomously opposed and exclusive with the idea of something being biologically real. And therefore, because you have not made that point earlier in the debate, you cannot affirm that because I'm working with social categorizations, that this is a problem. It is not, because this social categorization has been demonstrated to be current corresponding to a genetic reality. People can guess their 23andMe results, and they, they're pretty right about it. Okay, so uh, you haven't addressed my one of the couple of issues I pointed out with that, which is the confusion of ancestry with a, with a racial category. You can't just interchange someone's ancestry with what they self-identify as. For example, people in America who identify as Black Americans emphasize their phenotypic traits coupled with ancestry to identify as Black Americans. But people in Brazil de-emphasize the an ancestry and they focus more on the phenotypic traits. Also, identifying as Black in other countries might indicate that you come from the West Indies. See, the social construct of race uh, can account for that, can make sense of that, but that clearly doesn't track any uh, any like a non-arbitrary biological like um, reality. And the problem is, at the very beginning, like I said, is you run into a resolution uh, uh, dilemma. Uh, you're you're going to need to identify at what level of human population do is uh, privileged such that we would say that this is the biologically real level. If it can be one race or a thousand races, then it's ultimately it, it sounds like it's just arbitrary. You don't have a principled distinction between the two. If that's the case, then it's not real. Uh, the first statement you made is ridiculous. Uh, there is a link between ancestry and race. Of course, race is not just about categorizing humans based on their skin color. It refers to a genetic reality. And because it refers to a genetic reality, it is bound to the kind of ancestry you have. Of course, races, subspecies in general, they develop uh, out of ancestry, out of kind of uh, ancestry nucleization or, or a formation of clusters within uh, your ancestors that separate themselves from other populations and that eventually evolutionarily di di diverge from uh, the initial population such that they differentiate. The reason we have races being different today is that ancestors, our ancestors have not race mixed uh, into oblivion. They have not race mixed to the point of uh, spreading all of the genes equally across human populations. And so there is ultimately a link between ancestry and race. It, it, I don't give a shit if Brazilians don't get it or if they don't care. Uh, and it's not because someone on the planet would have a different conception of race that my conception of race is invalid or non-scientific. It doesn't matter if someone get, gets it wrong or somewhat wrong. I do not care. It doesn't affect the reality of the observations on human genetics that I can do. 
Okay, so I didn't say there was no link. I said that uh, that there's different views that take ancestry to hold a hold like more importance when you identify a, a racial category. Um, for example, Black Americans versus uh, people from Brazil who identify as Black and people from elsewhere who identify as Black. So I didn't say that ancestry is uh, not linked to it at all. I said that you can't just interchange mere ancestry with a uh, with race, the other thing is uh, I don't know why you're um, why you're talking about subspecies because it's certainly the case that uh, subspecies aren't identified in humans uh, by uh, scientific research whatsoever. Like I said, science uh, affirms the position that I hold that humans are just a polytypic species. There's a species that has phenotypic variation, but is ultimately uh, genetically homogeneous. There's a uh, extensive gene flow that's evident throughout our evolutionary history, and as a consequence, we've stayed the same species. I don't understand why you're not just fine with just calling us a human species and affirming the socially constructed concept of race that I've been putting forward. Well, uh, where scientists draw the line to define a subspecies is an arbitrary decision. And it's an arbitrary decision against which there is a lot of pushback within human societies. And that's why, uh, you, that's why scientists have been hesitant at defining human subspecies. But it was demonstrated by people like Ryan Falk at the Alternative Hypothesis that the degree of genetic variation in humans would be very much sufficient to define subspecies. Uh, there are, in fact, species in which we have defined subspecies, like lions and other mammals, in which we uh, there is more genetic variation there is less genetic variation than what we observe in humans. So that's a that's a human decisions where we define a subspecies. So I don't particularly care about it. However, I want to come back to a point I haven't addressed. You says you say what is the ultimate biological reality of race, and, and uh, what would be the principled criteria? Well, it boils down to. How, how can I say all these things about ge human genetics? Well, it boils down to single DNA letter differences between people. When I say that Rosenberg has a nuclei of classification it, that defines white Europeans, that, that, that finds uh, black Africans and Asians, this is all because of a set of letters of DNA that differ between the, these people. And so I'll tell you the, the principal criteria and the ultimate resolution that biology now allows to determine the differences between human beings is that of single letters of DNA, single uh, A, C, G, or T differing across people. And some of these A, C, G, or T in your DNA uh, do change the way you look and probably do change a lot of things in your life, including the way you think and the way you can perform in various societies. So the resolution problem, I don't have it at all. Uh, biology has the ultimate resolution for human genetics, which is sequence of DNA bases. Right, so I guess you're, you're agreeing that uh, the idea of subspecies is arbitrary, so you can't say that it's real. Uh, I don't understand why you think all of a sudden the classification that we identify as uh, racial categories um, isn't uh, just as arbitrary. In fact, I, I would like it for you to, I would like you to explain that. It seems like you almost did by saying you have a principled way of distinguishing between these uh, populations and that this was the case in the Rosenberg study. But the problem, like I said earlier with the Rosenberg study is that they found a KF5 K of six, K of seven, K of three. It all was relativized to the research aims of Rosenberg et al. And if it's relativized to the research aims of the investigator, then how can you say that it's real? Uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing. You can say that, that a continuum is real without setting a threshold on it and while recognizing that it's a kind of embedded into an uh, an umbrella of reality. And the best metaphor for this is colors. If you open your paint on your computer, your program called Paint, and you start choosing the color of your pen, you will see that there's a cloud of different colors and it moves from red to yellow to green in a very continuous fashion. Now, 
what you're saying is essentially because I cannot exactly put a boundary in that image of where red begins and where yellow begins, that red doesn't exist and that yellow doesn't exist. It's not the case. I, I say, yes, race is arbitrary as far as where you set it, because you could set that there is uh, that there are four human races or you could set that there are 100 human races as it turns out what most people use is the very uh folk definition of race where okay i have a conception of black asian white native americans maybe western islanders maybe i can differentiate them uh, but that's pretty much it and that's what people have found to be the threshold at which they are distinguishing between black and Asian. In other words, in my paint analogy between red and yellow. Um, so yeah, th 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 there's no problem with realities being more specific than the words that are aimed at representing them. Of course, we recognize that human words are limited in their representation of a, of the diversity of a three billion letter genome, which is what the DNA human genome is. But it's fine because it doesn't mean that you're wrong when you pick a particular color in paint and you say, this is going to be my red, or this is going to be my pink, or this is going to be somewhere along the continuum between red and yellow, and that's the color I'm interested in. In the same way, you can divide humanity in various uh, groups. These groups are not contradictory between one another. For example, if you were to divide humanity in 100 groups, well, I can predict that there's going to be 25, at least 25 of these groups that will be essentially just uh, separating down to a lower level the entire African population. Well, cool, you have more information, but people will not hold a hundred races in their head. They don't need that degree of information. Biology would allow this, but they don't need that much information, and so they won't use it. I'm, I'm totally comfortable with a society using approximations of scientific concepts that are not totally wrong. Right. So uh, a lot of things you just said were were just agreeing with the idea that race is socially constructed. It's either relative to whatever research aims someone has, or, or there's a pragmatic way of making sense of uh, human biology, the differences in the human genome, and uh, given that pragmatic way, uh, uh, that pragmatic way of uh, assessing human populations, you think that we shouldn't use a hundred uh, races? Um, okay, we can explore that, but I want you. I want to be clear, and I want you to be aware of this. You're not using any type of biologically real concept of race there. Instead, what you're doing is you're constructing this concept of race in order to make sense of human populations. That's fine, but the issue is that that position is a view that thinks that race is socially constructed, not biologically real. I don't care if you want to call all science socially constructed, you can, and in fact, you would be correct. Yeah, science is done by humans. Oh yeah, by the way, the words we use, they're, they've all been integrated in our brain by social means. I mean, every definition of words, it was all socially constructed in my brain. All right, so what? People, socially constructed does not mean false, by the way. This is something that would need to be explained to SJWs of your kind who try to blur the image that science provides of reality. I don't care if sometimes something is socially constructed because earlier you couldn't even answer my question about whether or not the human eye being brown or blue is a social construct. Yes, it is. That's the answer. It is a social construct when I say it's brown because the reality of light and the, re the reality of the color brown is one that spreads across a continuum and there's no real point at which it becomes brown. It's more of a subset of the space of colors where things are more brownish and there's another subset where things are more bluish, yet you have no issue with saying that human eyes can be brown or blue. And I have no issue saying that a man can be an African or an Asian. Um, well, incidentally, those are just pointing to like a 
nations or, or continents geographical distinctions at most ancestry so it's not even pointing to race but uh, I don't understand why you would think that I don't think that something is real if I say that it's uh, socially constructed what I'm saying there is that something is not biologically real instead we construct these different categories in order to make sense of human populations which uh, get, you seem to agree with and so uh, like uh, the thing is, is this is a position that SJW should hold, and uh, right now you're holding the same position that I do. You don't think that it's a biologically real concept, in part because of uh, the resolution problem that I pointed to. There's no uh, non, there's no non-arbitrary way to identify which level of human populations is real over any other level of human populations. Uh, Again, that's fine. It's not biological realism, but I guess what I don't understand is, uh, like, what's your problem with what the scientific uh, consensus view is, which is that you see humans as a single species. Do you not have a problem with that then? You are jumping from fallacy to fallacy. It's actually hard for me to note all of them. You make a non sequitur because you've not established that there was a contradiction between a socially constructed reality and a biologically uh, real one. And so you are saying, well, because I've just acknowledged that uh, race is socially constructed, at least as far as human beings are talking about it, and therefore it must be socially constructed since it is passed on through human language. But you haven't demonstrated that something being socially constructed is in dichotomously exclusive with the idea that it could be biologically real. It is not. Something can be socially constructed and biologically real. And when I say it's biologically real, I have told you my resolution. My resolution is down to the single SNPs and DNA, the single letters of DNA that do differ. And to that extent, the social concept of race is real to the extent that it represents this reality. It represents a combined knowledge of a few or, or thousands of queens of DNA that differ across human beings. And what was your final question? I, 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 I couldn't note it. Well, it was just, why do you disagree with the scientific consensus that humans are understood as a polytypic species? But you you I reminded did. me that you did, in fact, uh, say you you have a you have like a level of resolution that you want to use to individuate between different uh, human populations and call them race. It was at the uh, um, at the single uh, letters in the DNA. Uh, how is that a principal distinction? Why that instead of any other level? Oh, well, you could have any other level. It's not because you have the highest level of resolution that there are not lowest level of resolutions that are not also valid. But going back to your point about uh, humans being a single species. Well, again, first, species is defined by humans. It is a label. And so I don't really care about uh, defining humans as a species. All I see, as far as I'm concerned, as a biologist, when I work in theory, all I see are just genes making copies of themselves, just DNA replicators creating phenomena, including the, the phenomena of species. And the boundaries of a species are very much human defined and very much arbitrary also. Uh, that being said, um, why you, you say, why do I not want all of humans to be considered a species. I've never said that. Saying that something can be divided further into further subcategories is not denying the highest category. And so even if I had said that, it wouldn't be a problem. That being said, I have not said that because I do not stand particularly for the conception of species, but that may be a separate debate. But that being said, it's not because I would tell you that the human species is divided into clusters of people that differ significantly through their DNA, which has phenotypic uh, consequences. Saying that would not be denying the idea that they're all part of the same species. Um, so you said that you had a principled uh, criteria that identifies those uh, traits that you can use in order to um, differentiate between different uh, races. And you said it was at like a, the SMP level, right? Uh, but then you said it could be at any other level. 
how is that not just uh, arbitrarily choosing one level to go with? Well, <laughs> I've not arbitrarily chosen. I've told you, you can go up to the single letter of DNA. And that's what we do when we do genome sequencing. But how is, uh, how is red, how is the existence of pink not questioning the existence of red? Where to, to the extent that along a continuum, there are things that are true about these colors and there is a progression. And it's not because you've reached red that you've denied that pink existed or you've denied that green existed. Uh, when we are talking about a embedded continuum, we're talking about stuff that will be valid at all levels. It is somewhat valid when I say someone is black in America, because if I tell you he's black and or he's white, you already have information about their genetics. Now, if I told you he's black with, with an S&P modification uh, at position one, two, three, four, uh, such that it's A, C, G, T, well, that I would just be giving you further details but I would already know some of the highest resolution stuff just by knowing the lowest resolution stuff. In other words, the low resolution stuff, the full conception of race is informative toward the highest resolution uh, genome, genome sequencing stuff. Right, but uh, the issue is, is that uh, these race categories make sense in terms of socio, cultural, economic, uh, factors. They don't make sense in terms of biology. In fact, you, you conceded that. You think that it's ultimately arbitrary. Are you just so happening to pick uh, those traits that we can use that track our folk race concepts? Because then that's just gerrymandering. It's not actually identifying race as being biologically real. It's already assuming the folk concept of race and then just picking traits that happen to make it so groups that we can make a biological groups that correlate with those folk concepts of race. But again, that that doesn't count. That's not showing that it's real. Well, you can stand there and say that doesn't count and keywords like you are wrong or you've just admitted that you are that I was right. You can say that all day. The fact is you've not provided a counter to what I'm saying. You are inventing a reality that I should stick to or, or adhere to, which I've not. What I'm saying from the beginning remains true. There is a statistical reality about race. Even the full conception of race contains information about genetics. Therefore, it is not useless. In fact, it is very useful for people to categorize people between white, black, and Asians. And that's why they keep doing it. And they do it in the dating sphere. And it tells them useful information. What science has discovered is that this, this categorization of humans is not informationless. It does have information. Now you can push science to know it down to the single letters of DNA, and you can see that the that the social concept of race does correspond to a biological reality. But really, no one gives a shit because people have already extracted what they needed to extract from uh, the conception of race, and it serves them in their personal lives, in their dating lives, in their reproductive choices, and that's fine. Right, so I don't understand why you keep on saying that I don't. I think that it's useless if I think that it's socially constructed, or if I think that it's not biologically real. I think that the utility arises from thinking of it as being socially constructed and uh, separating it from this idea that there's some sort of biological grounding between uh, these different human populations and what we call the different races. Um, I think that once you think that they're socially constructed, you can better explain the pattern of human variation that we see around the world. So I do think it's important. In fact, I think it's scientific to do it that way. Uh, the thing is, is that that's fine and uh, everything, and you agreeing with me that uh, that's the way that we should use it in order to inform other parts of our lives, like going on Tinder or whatever. Uh, again, that's all fine, but that's not saying that race is biologically real. That's agreeing with me that uh, race is socially constructed. And so, um, well, like, I guess, I guess I would just welcome you to this side um, and like um, just ask you, what are the folk concepts of race that you uh, hold to 
and maybe we can look at your other views that you hold um, in or and as, like uh, evaluate them that from there. All right, we have to conclude the debate because I'm going to have a show starting very soon. That being said, I want to warn the audience. The person we have here has a defective brain. He keeps making fallacies. And so everywhere in this debate where he said, oh, you agree with me then, do not trust him. It's not true. Listen to my words. This person is highly defective in his rational processes. For example, I've demonstrated at the very beginning of the debate that there was no contradiction between a social construction and a scientific one. Of course, all scientific concepts are transmitted through words, and therefore all scientific concepts are social construction to some extent. But this guy went on for an hour as if I had not demonstrated this, and he keeps going on on it as if there was a, a contradiction between social construction and race, and then making fallacious leaps, concluding that I've agreed with him on this. What I don't disagree, what I don't agree with here is the way this guy is refusing to look at the genetic reality, the biological reality that people differ at the genetic level in human societies. And this, he has not provided anything against it. What is provided is a fallacy by which, because he thinks that there is no biological reality to the words that people use as races, that is white, black, Asian, he believes that therefore there is no link to the genetics. But I've shown that there was a link and he's acknowledged that there was a correlation. So what we have here is an individual who is not rational, who is self-deceptive, who refuses to engage in the actual conversation. This guy is reading a pre-written script, and you should not trust any of his words simply because he makes fallacious jumps throughout this debate. Just rewatch the debate and mute him. Listen to what I have to say, and you'll have what is the truth. Okay, so it sounds like JF wants to wrap up. Um, I think that we should do probably closings for each side. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I think that. Fish, you can, of course, respond if you have anything to say to that. Then I think we'll do closings and call it. Does that sound appropriate for you guys? Yep. Well, that sounded like it was your closing. And let, Or if you want to treat that as your closing and just give Fish the last word there because uh, you had the first Absolutely. word. Absolutely. That was my closing. Okay, sure. Then just go ahead and give your last word, Fish. Right. So the remember uh, the question was or the proposition was uh, – race is biologically real. I deny that and uh, JF affirmed it. JF essentially agreed with me that race is something that is socially uh, constructed. There's correlations between the categories that we identify as race with biology. But if that's all you need in order to establish that um, biological race is a thing, then he would have to agree that uh, saying that being a widow is, uh, is a biologically real category of race. He's not going to agree to that. In fact, he he laughed at that idea. But that's what his position would commit him to if he thought that that's merely all you need in order to establish that something is biologically real. So merely showing that there's correlations between what we use as categories to identify a race with, uh, with the biology of the individuals who make up those races isn't good enough. He's going to have to try harder. And if he doesn't, then he's going to have to just live with the idea that instead what he thinks is that race is socially constructed. And I just want to say that I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. The idea is that the race is socially constructed. This is a position that's held by scientists, and it's a consensus view. This uh, also corresponds with the view that humans are just a single species that are polytypic. That is that there's a a gradient of variation amongst humans, amongst uh, uh, populations. And so, of course, there's going to be differences amongst uh, individual populations, but there's a resolution problem if you want to say that the, these differences are biological. The idea is that, um, that uh, you're not going to be able to show that any one human population um, is privileged as being the biologically real category of race than any other population. And he actually agreed with this. When I asked him to give a principal distinction between uh, those uh, 
those traces identify one race over another. He agreed that, well, it could be at this level, but it can also be at this level. If you can't establish which level it is, you haven't given a principal distinction between those two uh, uh, categories of race. And so you haven't given us something that's considered biologically real. Um, so again, I think that instead race makes more sense uh, if you think of it as being socially uh, historical, uh, culturally constructed, and uh, and I don't think that race is a biologically real concept. Uh, thanks for the debate, uh, JF, and ask yourself. Okay, well, thank you guys both for um, having the debate. Obviously, it's great to have you here, and I appreciate you making my job as a mod easy by not getting into any kind of talking over each other match. So, yeah, um, keep well, and if you ever want to do it again, just make me aware. Thanks for hosting. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.